Hey, good morning. It's Thursday. We got one more after this, and we make we made it to the end of the week, y'all. Truly a blessing that the Lord allowed us to wake up and see another day with his precious breath of life in us. To do his bidding. To do his will. So, uh, peace and blessings multiply to you and yours. Y'all stay strong. Have a great day. I hope uh, this video edifies somebody. All right. Open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah the prophet. Because the Lord tell you in the New Testament, he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said. And, and the Lord tell you in Luke chapter 24, say, the, the, the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. I'm going to touch on some things. So Isaiah chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Ooh, all nations? That's right. That's right. The Lord is not a respecter of persons. Yeah, he chose Israel, but he got others to bring it in the fold too. That's going to have righteous hearts and do the bidding of the Lord. <clears throat> Uh, verse 3, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Mm. The Lord going to teach us his ways. We got a lot of questions that even some of the wise men can't answer. <clears throat> but some things have yet to be revealed. And at a set time in the future, we will all be God. And we will know all things. Verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall bear their swords. I mean, they shall beat their swords into plowshares. And their spears and the pruning hooks, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Mm, that's a covenant of peace. We don't have that yet. We got to keep on pushing. We got to take it day by day. It's a lot of nations at wars nowadays. But ain't no peace yet. But when the Lord come back, he's going to set up that government of peace. Now let's get to verse 10. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. What? <laughs> for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. Do you know in the New Testament, in future days, people are going to be hiding themselves in the rocks and in the dens and in the caves? I believe that's Revelation chapter 6. They're going to be hiding because they know they've been wicked and being contrary to God all this time and now the Lord and came back while they still alive and they're going to be scared because he ain't coming back as no sweet cutting the lamb he, he coming back with the wrath of the lion of the tribe of Judah and he going to tell up a whole lot of folks verse 11 the lofty looks of man shall be humble oh that's why I say it all the time you better humble yourself before the Lord humble you. Because there ain't no good feeling. I've been there. <laughs> Man. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Verse 12. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. Ooh. See a lot of us get puffed up in this thing. And a lot of people that's not walking in this truth. They get puffed up. They got pride. You know what I'm saying? They so proud. But they ain't serving the Lord. 
And some changes need to be made to that. But what does it say right here? Verse 12 again. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. And upon everyone that is lifted up. And he shall be brought low. Mm. You got to humble yourself. Skip to verse uh, 17. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. And the hardiness of men shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. Ooh, you got idols everywhere. Even in so-called churches. Even in so-called camps. Did you know that? You got idols on, on signs of restaurants and stores and businesses. Back in my hometown, you got, you got a building called Janus. The two-faced God, right? I can go on and on. It ain't about me, though. Uh, 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 verse 19. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth. See? For the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. Mm. Man. He's going to do a lot of shaking. Because everywhere you go, is idols everywhere. People serving idols and doing things contrary to God. Verse 20. And that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship. Ooh. To the moles and to the bats. Verse 21. To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord. See, the Lord keeps saying it over and over again. Read Revelation chapter 6. They're going to say, they're going to say, let the, let the dust, let the rocks fall on us for fear of the Lord. Uh, for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. He said it again. He made it a serious point when he mentioned it again. He said, hey, I'm going to do this. So when you see it happening, you better be on the right side of me. So this won't be happening to you. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 7. I'm going to try to be brief this morning. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Ooh. That's deep. A virgin going to conceive? Look around today. You ain't got too, too many people, too many virgins out there. Male or female. And it, do you know people with knowledge of the truth, even they don't believe this? But why is that? Because Satan is busy all the time. That's why. You know why? Because Satan been around for a long time down here on this earth and he's been influencing man with his thoughts ideas and suggestions in different cultures about this virgin birth way before way before Jesus came in the flesh way before Jesus was a baby born he put it in these ancient cultures but they these ancient cultures with this virgin birth they not worshiping the true and living God. See, Satan is not a creator of things. He mimics things. He imitates things of God. That's why when you read it in Isaiah 14, he wants to be like God. Matter of fact, it ain't, it ain't, I didn't put it in there, but let me, let me go there since I mentioned it. Isaiah 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Who is Lucifer? Satan the devil. How art thou cut to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? But thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. What? The only one in the whole Bible that wants to go up yonder. That's why I tell you, all songs, all gospel songs ain't biblical. The only one in this Bible that wants to go to heaven. Is Satan the devil. Okay. Lucifer. Right. 
people from my generation, they, they remember them songs by the whiners, right? Heaven. Heaven is where I want to be. <laughs> no, that's what the devil said. That's where the devil want to go. Because he got kicked out. And he wants to go back. And what did it say right here? Verse 13, for thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the Lord. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. See? Counterfeit God. He wants to be worshipped like God. He does things to imitate God. But it's fake. You know, you remember back in the days when when you used to go to uh, certain stores and they had a, they had a, the real gold, and then they had a fake gold. <laughs> you wear that fake gold, it might turn green on you. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be careful. Same thing with us. We got in this walk. We gotta be careful about about uh, so called holy things. We got to try the spirits. But, uh, yeah. Bear with me. All right. Matthew 1. Just to touch on this virgin birth in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1 and 1 verse, verse 23. Verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Mm, same thing I read in the Old Testament, a more sure word of prophecy. And shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So the mother virgin births in, in them other uh them other uh societies and religions and and cultures predating Jesus was fake. Okay, this is the real deal right here. Emmanuel God with us. It's Emmanuel be, uh being spelled with E, capital E in this one, in the New Testament, and in the Old Testament in Isaiah is capital I. Isaiah chapter 8. See, this is the prophet Isaiah prophesying of Jesus coming. As well as many other things. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us. Man, those evil people speaking against you, they taking counsel against you, and they speaking evil words against you, trust in the Lord, because they words ain't going to stand. They folly and foolishness ain't going to stand against you, because God is with us. Skip to verse 13. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Don't the Bible say you don't fear no man on this planet? <laughs> fear the one that can kill you and put you in the lake of fire? Hmm. Verse 14, and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. Hmm. Don't the truth offends? Does this offend you? <laughs> for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Mm. That's what happened, right? That's what happened to Israel back then. Because during the days of Isaiah the prophet, Israel went into Assyrian captivity. Did you know that? 
they went into Assyrian captivity. That's just like, that's in real time, real life. Let's say, for instance, somebody break in your house and take your stuff and take you prisoner back to their homeland. That's what happened to Israel in the days of Isaiah. <laughs> Verse 16, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Mm. Didn't Jesus have disciples? Yeah, John the Baptist had disciples, but it was prophesied in the Old Testament of John to come before the Messiah. Woo! Moving on. Moving on. Skip to verse 20. To the law and the testimony. That's the Old Testament, which is the law, and the New Testament, which is the testimony. What does it say right here? If they speak not according to this word, law and the testimony, the Old Testament and the New, not one or the other, both. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Boom. And what is light? Truth. I'll show you that same thing in the New Testament. First John chapter 2. 1 John 2, one more verse. First John chapter 2, verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Ooh, ain't that cold? <laughs> Man, somebody need to read that. And get their spiritual eyes and ears open to that. And say, hey, this then I need to start doing this. Because this 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 word this word convicts. Okay? It man, it vexes you because you you like, man, every 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 time I do a lesson, uh bricks fall on me. Because I wasn't a bad child, but I did I wasn't no angel, I wasn't no good angel. I did some things. And the Lord is a collector. Sometimes he still makes you pay. You know. You know what I'm saying? He will make you pay now and later. You just hope that you forgive him and that he allows you to make it into the kingdom. Uh, okay. Isaiah 9. Verse 6 and 7. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Who? The Mighty God. Almighty God. The Most High God. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Do we have peace yet? The Lord ain't came back yet. Verse 7, of the increase of his government, government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the, the, zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Yes. So be patient and wait on the Lord. But while you're waiting, do what he say. Put in them works. Do his bidding. And you'll be fine. Isaiah 10. Begin on verse 20. Isaiah 10 and verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, that's a small number, right? That the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote him. Mm. Then I showed you the other day about Jeremiah getting smoked by passion, which means hit or beat, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, 
yet a remnant of them shall return. Ooh, why is that? Because Israel scattered all over the world, but the majority of Israel that scattered is not going to come into this truth. You know your people. Israel is hard-headed, stiff-necked, hard-hearted when it comes to the truth. Y'all know I ain't lying. And it's going to be too late. I'm reading prophecy right here. It's telling us how it's going to be. That's why it's important to get ourselves straight right now. ASAP. Verse 22 again. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. Turn to Isaiah 11. Beginning with verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. That's Jesus. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Hmm. Don't the New Testament say the meek shall inherit the earth? And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Hmm. That's Jesus. That's the Lord coming back. That's what he got to do to set up his kingdom. They ain't going to just give it to him. They ain't going to just bow down and say, Oh, Lord, you back now. Yeah, yay. Yay. Come on. We ready to serve you now, Lord. Even though up until now we've been doing all this wickedness. No, it ain't going to happen like that. They going to think that they going to be so puffed up in the head, so prideful and proud that they think that they going to be able to fight against the Lord. It ain't going to be a fair fight. Not for them, it ain't. Uh, verse 4, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Verse 5, And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. What? That's that covenant of peace. You can also read about the covenant of peace uh, in Ezekiel and, and Jeremiah you say Israel shall be saved and and Jerusalem shall dwell safely so we know that ain't happened yet right but it's coming uh, verse uh, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them oh, <laughs> oh my bad and the cow and the bear shall feed. The young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. <laughs> we, you know that ain't happened yet. That's that covenant of peace from the Lord, from the Most High. Verse 8. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the ass. That's a snake. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. That's right. Prince of Peace. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people to it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. Verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. The third time? No. No the second time to recover the remnant of his people. So we know this ain't happened yet. The Lord ain't came back to gather his people yet. We shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea all over this world. Verse 12, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble, assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, 
and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ooh. The Lord's people's enemies going to be what? Cut off. What that mean? Kill. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. One more place, Matthew 7. This is future, man. It's going to be a glorious day. But before it happens, <laughs> Lord going to do a lot of whooping on some heads. Matthew 7, beginning with verse 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And that's eternal life. And few there be that find it. Then I just read it to you in Isaiah that the Lord gonna recover the remnant of his people. That's why I always say many are called, few are chosen. Hmm. True statement. We all are called. All of us. But a lot of people want to do something else. <laughs> you know? Man, a lot of people have knowledge of things, but they want to, they don't want to, uh, they don't want to do what the Lord say. You know, I mentioned the whiners, right? Like, uh, that's why I say uh, all gospel songs ain't biblical, because cause you got this, uh, anytime you see Vicky whiners with a red, uh, dress on or with red on standing on a black and white checkerboard <laughs> no nah, that ain't dealing with the most high God that's Freemasonry Illuminati stuff and that is of the devil okay and, and what I tell you he, 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 the devil comes to you with thoughts ideas and suggestions Hey, in your senses, because, uh, you know, it used to be a saying back when I was growing up that rock and roll music was of the devil. <laughs> no, it's in all music. Even Stevie Wonder. I remember we had, to, I remember we had the album cover in, in my living room. It was a song on there called Rocket Love. It said, you took me riding in the rocket and gave me a star. And at a half a mile from heaven, you drop me back down to this cold, cold world. Who wants to go to heaven? Satan. Think about that. <laughs> so, I know I said more than a mouthful. And I was trying not to get emotional about it. So, hey, Peace and blessings multiply to you and yours with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. Much love to y'all. Peace.